All right, all right, all right. Guru here. Good to be back. Uh, moved into my new house. Um, over the last couple weeks, I moved from Gaston to McMinnville, Oregon. It's not too far away, but uh, we're on my secret river. This is uh, the river I don't talk about with anybody, and thank the Lord, not very many people know about it. So it's kind of a locals thing, but uh, I was here. Uh, we finally got some rain. Um, finally. We've basically gone six weeks without any measurable rain. It's made the back end of our steelhead season just horrible. Um, they're still getting fish, and guys are still getting fish. For everybody who listened to me and was over on the North Fork, or I mean, excuse me, the Nehalem, the Big River, um, they did well, man. They and they've still been doing well, especially from uh, from the mouth of the Salmonberry down, and uh, it, you know they're still getting quite a few fish. Now the the main stem of the the Nehalem, it's not exactly you know high although with this rain it's going to be coming up we were looking at springtime lows but uh they're still pulling out some some good fish for everybody who's putting in at beaver slide and and going down to uh rogers camp on the the nehalem big river um the mouth of cook creek is definitely putting out some fish i seen one about 22 pounds that came from there little hairy trail down how do you like that huh um beautiful beautiful big giant buck um and that just goes to show what i've always said the best genetics on the north coast are in the nehalem the big river we might see a fish coming up this tail out that's mainly why i'm right here um a lot of times you will see them you can see those intermittent boulders down there they like to hide behind those of course as most steelhead or oh ain't no I don't see it moving right there behind that big rock there just to the right of that small tree right in the middle that might be a fish I don't see it moving around yet that might be a fish right there but anyways uh yeah the big river the Nehalem um the Silettes if you were down there they're get still getting some fish it's been spotty it has not been good, no matter where you go. Um, we floated uh, two weeks ago, uh, floated the Sandy and um, from Oxbow down to Dabney. We only seen one fish caught. Um, that was it. And uh, it was pretty, pretty, pretty shitty to say the least. But uh, yeah, we'll take a look at this tail out here. Some fast water. See there behind that big rock yonder? Let's sit right here for a minute. Maybe we'll see something move up in there. But uh, we finally, as you can see, we got a little color in the river. And rivers are coming up. So, this week, the Wilson, Tillamook area, Master River, is supposed to come up. They're saying 6768. For all those who want to catch some nice steelhead at the end of the season here, you need to be there when that river is on the drop. Let it come up. I am. Um, you can still catch quite a few fish on the Wilson, even at six feet. Um, that looked like a fish that was right there just for a second. No. Anyways, everything's coming up on the the Wilson, the Trask, everything. So you need to be there probably. If the rain stops, I would say Wednesday, Thursday, <coughs> excuse me, um, is going to be the best, um, but we'll see. But you need to be fishing it for sure on the drop, and that goes for any other water that you plan on fishing on the north coast of Oregon. You need to be there on the drop. This water we're getting this week is going to suck in all the last fish. Every fucking one of them. And you need to be there. Um, this weekend should be good as long as the water drops into shape. Or some of the smaller streams will be, uh, will be dropping into shape. Uh, another one I want 
to mention for everybody the North Fork Nehalem. If that river comes up, those soapstone fish are going to be moving in. Now, they're all natives. There ain't no hatcheries there, but you might get a hatchery maybe. Actually, I think there's two fish right underneath those limbs on the far side. I wish I had a better camera. I'm doing this with my phone, but I think they're hanging right there. I'll have to run a spinner down through there and find out if they're biting. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah those soapstone fish they're uh they're definitely gonna be there there's no doubt about it um this is gonna suck in the last of the winter steelhead um there might be a few early summer fish moving in uh you know specifically like on the uh the nestucca it's got a really good summer run and they usually get some fish in the springtime you can go in there late late winters or early summers I've caught some beautiful fish on the, the Nestucca in May, um, early May at that too, if the water's up, if the river's doing real good and the water came up nice. So uh, definitely want to give that a, a shot. Boy, that looks delicious, doesn't it, down through there? Definitely going to fish that. Um, but... Along with the Nestucca, like I said before, the Siletz was putting out some fish. Um, you know, all the holes on Lower Wilson, Lower Trask, um, even some of the holes on the Kilchis. I know a, of one particular guy that floats uh, the Kilchis in his little pontoon boat when it gets this low. Because in the bottom end, those fish will hang out. And uh, there's some nice late run natives in the Kilchis. Um, and maybe an early springer if you get lucky. But uh, that can also happen on the Trask. But all the other rivers, you might give North Fork, Clask, and I a look see if it comes up high enough. Um, if you call the hotline at the North Fork Nehalem and the. Um, the uh, say the water levels run in. Like at 50, the North Fork Class and I could be another another good option for some last minute fish. We're gonna walk down here to this tail out right here. Um, but uh, just prepare yourself, get your gear ready, get everything ready. If you can take weekdays off, you need to be doing that. That's how the successful steelheader really puts fish in the bank is, is taking weekdays off now. Unfortunately, that's the, 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 the times we live in. And so, uh, you know, if you can afford to do that, great. If you can't, just uh, make sure, you know, you got everything ready to go for your weekend trip. Make sure all your gear is ready. Pre-ties done. Rods are set up. You don't have to do nothing except put your waders on and hit the water. Prepare. That's how today's steelheader does the best work. They prepare. And that's what you need to be doing if you want to be a steelheader. You got to prepare. You got to, you know, have a liberal mindset when it comes to techniques. Got to be willing to try anything. We're trying to hook up here. And so whatever is necessary for you to do the things to hook up, you need to be doing them. That being said... As I walk down this beautiful hidden river, we'll check this spot out. This one's a little hairy to get down to, but that tail out right there is just yummy. You can walk here by this culvert pipe and come down and then walk across. But uh, right here, a lot of times, if I just stand here for a minute, I might see something come up the tail out. But this is a great hole. I catch so many fat cutthroat in the summertime right here. It's just, it's sick. I let them all go. I don't keep them. Um, just cause you know, they're finally starting to come back. So if we take out those big genetics, they're gonna be gone. And you know, these are native coastal cutthroat trout. Um, you know, I will say this, I am on the coast. <laughs> Won't say what side I'm at, but um, 
it's always a good idea to let them big cuts go. I think you can keep two in the summer now, but I don't hear. Um, I like to let them go. Maybe in four or five years when there's a whole bunch of those big 13, 14 inches, I might keep a couple because that is an unbelievably delicious meal. Cutthroat trout. Um, I absolutely love them. They are my favorite trout, no doubt. But I... We'll just stand here for a minute. But as far as uh, this coming period goes, I would definitely be looking at the Wilson, Trask, Kilchis, Nastaka. I would have to hedge my bets probably on the Wilson and the Nastaka. That's where I'd be, especially if the water comes up right and is dropping down by this weekend. Um, both those rivers have a broodstock program where the vast, the bulk of their broodstockers come back in February and March. And since we had such low water for the last six weeks, that's really, in my opinion, is going to be a place to be. But everybody else knows that too. So if you got a boat, that's one way you can get away from the crowds. Definitely, uh, you know, if you can fish the weekdays, you're going to get away from the crowds too. You also got to remember, you know, the guides are out there too. Um, so, uh, you know, it's just the times we live in. It's busy. It's really, really busy. And we're all just going to have to learn to live with one another. One thing I do want to touch on is river etiquette. Um, you know, don't low hole people. We got to stop that. There's too many people that do it, especially, you know, some of you older gentlemen. You know, I know you're 65, 70 years old, but that doesn't give you a right to fish over somebody's water. You know, no matter what your age, you should always be courteous and always have etiquette on the river. You just, that's just something we have to do as fishermen. We're all out there for the same purpose. There's no reason for us to fight and argue and, you know, getting fist fights on the river and we don't need that shit. I know I've been in a few fist fights on the river, although it be fun and creates a warm and lasting memory. Uh, sometimes <laughs> it's not so good for your image. <laughs> so that being said, let's, let's all try to get along and, and, uh, you know, be courteous, courteous to each other and, you know, just practice good river etiquette. Just be nice. We're all trying to trying to hook up, you know. No reason to destroy our other. Ah, oh, see yon boat down there that someone has swamped. You can just see the bottom of the boat. That's too funny. I can't believe someone tried to row down this in anything but an inflatable. There's some. This stretch is pretty uh, pretty tame, but the upper end, you really need an inflatable to float this. It's just not, uh, there's some nasty, nasty minefields and bouldery, you know, just, it's just horrible. And, uh, you need, really need an inflatable, but hey, hopefully they're all right and they're not dead and I don't find a body in the water. That's always a good thing, but, uh, you know, prepare. This is the tail out of, uh, the season. You know, hopefully we can all get a few fish in there and, uh, um, you know, fill the freezer up a little bit, get a few more fish. I know it hasn't been a great year for a lot of us. It's just been tough and, you know, I've gotten a few fish here, a few fish there, but it's just been another tough year on the north coast of Oregon. Not, not banner by any means for a lot of people. Um, but, uh, you know, you just, that's just the way it is sometimes, you know, it's going to get better. I've seen this before. The fishing will get better, hopefully. And, uh, we just got to tough our way through it. That being said, um, good luck this week. Uh, if you hook up, let me know, you know, where, uh, you can hit me up on Facebook at, uh, Jim Allen Custom Tackle. You can uh, also, and I am going to turn the comments on. Everybody has been saying I haven't turned the comments on for my videos on YouTube. And so I will do that. 
But uh, let's let everybody know in the network, hey, where the good fishing is and what's going on and what's doing what. Let's all try to help each other out because if we do, it just means more fish in the box. And share the wealth, man. Share the wealth. But uh, hopefully you all have good luck this week. Um, I'm back to doing videos now that I'm done with the whole house thing and getting moved in and uh, got an update on my boat. So getting a brand new Willie um, should be here hopefully end of July. So uh, I'm in the slot and they're getting my boat done. It's going to be a glorious thing. But uh, hopefully you guys have a great week. God bless. And uh, keep the lines tight. Guru out.